Right, so have you ever wanted to have psychic powers? Well, today is your lucky day. Coming back is Susan Gerbic. This morning she spoke about grief vampires, the psychic mediums who have psychic powers, as we know. Now she's going to tell us how to open our third eye and see the world in new dimensions. Please welcome back to the stage, Susan Gerbic. I'm being wired here, two different ways. This is how I did that sting with two different wires. So I'm, I'm comfortable being wired twice. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to mention to you all is, um, you guys having a really good time? Because we are. Mark and I are having a fabulous time. I have four slides, and this is gonna be fairly quick. And, uh, go ahead. And one of the things I wanted to mention to you, or there's a couple things that I forgot to mention whenever I was up on the stage this morning, first thing, and I think it's real important to note that this Wikipedia team that I run, this GSOW, Girl Skepticism on Wikipedia team, we've already, um, we keep track of how many Wikipedia pages we have written. And we do edits all the time. You know, there's thousands of edits we do. But we keep track of just the pages that we've completely, completely rewritten and written. And we're up to 1,230 pages. And that's in multiple languages. We also keep track of how, much, how many times each of those page views has been viewed. And we're at uh, 51,429,488 page views this week. So I just wanted to mention that. The other thing I want to mention is the Taylor Winterstein page that we were talking about. My team has just let me know that it's, it's uh, the number one. Um, when you Google her name, you're getting the Wikipedia page. So, first few. So, this is something I've never done before. We're going to do something called a, a, a grief vampire workshop. No, it's, it's a, a cold reading workshop. And I want to bring Amanda down, uh, Amanda and uh, Kelly, Kelly Eckersley. So, Amanda has been one of my people who's been on my Wikipedia team for a while, and Kelly is uh, one of my current editors. And this screen should have the text that they're going to be reading. So, come on over here, you guys. I've never done this before, so we're going to try something new. This is, should be fun. So, this is an uh, article I wrote. It's called uh, Matt Fraser Live. And uh, I called it Matt Fraser Live because that's a lot of his videos are titled Matt Fraser Live. So, if somebody's looking for his video, they may end up getting one of my articles I wrote about him. So, that's kind of a sneaky way of getting people to view uh, this. So, what I did is I transcribed one of his, um, just a very small interaction. I audio taped the entire thing. Is it coming up? No? Hold on. Let's sing Little Teapot or something. It's, um, I think it's this one, Cold Reading. Okay, so here we go. Is that up? Okay, so if you want to put that to the thing. Oh, and I need a little clicky thing thing. So I have no idea how long. We don't have a lot of time, so this is going to go pretty fast. So Kelly and Amanda have decided they would do this for me, and they haven't really practiced this at all, except they had like one quick read through. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, I want you to imagine, because this is really important, that you have to remember that people who go see psychics not, are not stupid people. They're just ill-informed. Some are willfully ignorant about how the methods are done, but at least in America, we are not teaching people that how to cr think critically. The first critical thinking class most people in America take is in college. So if you don't go to college, you're not, I mean, even people who go to college, they don't know what hot reading is, they don't know what cold reading is, and so on. So uh, Kelly and Amanda are going to play the parts of the sitter and the, um, and the uh, psychic. And I want you to see how fast this comes at Amanda, because Kelly's going to read this to Amanda and see how darn fast it is. And remember, she has no transcript. She has, it's coming at her fast and furious. She's at a psychic event that she has paid for. That's important because she wants to get her money's worth. She's excited, a group this big. She's been chosen out of that psychic reading. They're gonna, it's like so exciting. So she's gonna, even if it isn't a perfect fit, she's gonna try to fit it in. Okay, here we go. So you guys can read this to yourself so you have the benefit of a transcript. Go ahead, Kelly. Okay. 
Oh boy, I've got a couple of different souls. When I come over there, they are all trying to get my attention like a freaking operator on the other side. I say, this is your dad's way of acknowledging you that he is here at the moment. I'm connecting with him. I'm li- I'll, let, I'll let my lights go out, which is his way of acknowledging that there was light issues before his departure. Do you understand that? When I'm connecting with him, he said he does not want to be in that wheelchair, which is his way of acknowledging that even though he couldn't walk or move, that is his way of letting you know on the other side that he can move fine because he's running up and down with me as I'm connecting with him. Understand that? And he says to me while I'm speaking to let her know that more importantly, I was not losing my mind at the end because he is acknowledging that. So did you think he was losing his mind because he is uh, bringing that up when I'm speaking to you, to him, and your father is telling me he was as sharp as a tack here in the physical world. I wanted to have my independence and I wanted to live as long as I could. He is acknowledging that. And some of the hardest things was when his eye went out here in the physical, he is talking about the infection. Was What, what was the infection about? Well, he had colon cancer. So, but, but your dad also tells me when I'm connected with him, his stomach bloating up when I'm connecting. Right, right before he passed, I felt his, it was a bloat or a big issue with you here. And I felt it was sepsis or it was sepsis that was going on. Oh, okay. Did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, so we're going to stop for a second there. <laughs> okay, we got three more slides. Now, these four slides I'm, we have, the, the psychic got through in four minutes. So Kelly is not exaggerating by reading fast like that. In fact, it probably went a little faster. The other thing you don't realize is how much body language Amanda or the sitter is giving to the person. They're nodding. They're doing a lot of this. And Amanda, she's, um, you know, they're, they're picking a person out of the, uh, the crowd that probably could possibly have a father has passed on, right? The odds are there. So... Um, As you look at this, I want you guys, I wanted to have more feedback, but I don't think we have a lot of time. But some of the things I want you to be able to notice is this thing, I mean, he's not letting her talk, obviously, right? She's not acknowledging it. And this thing he keeps saying, can you acknowledge that? Can you acknowledge that? And she's like, I'd like to, you know, but she can't. So this, so some of the things, anything stand out to you guys really quickly? Somebody throw it out and I'll repeat it. You don't have to worry about a microphone. It's a shotgun, yes. It's a lot of shotgun things. It's very fast, furious. Um, how do we know what her dad was saying? I mean, of course he wants to say that he was sharp as a tack. I mean, what person wouldn't want to? And of course he wanted to have his independence. And of course he wanted to live as long. I mean, on and on and on. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Here we go. You ready? Deep breath. Because... Because when I'm connecting with him, he is showing me that when I'm speaking to him, and it, it is his way of letting me know, and you know that he wasn't going to make it here in the physical world, even though he was fighting and going through this and in this world. Yes, he was fighting. Because when I'm connecting with him, the first thing you need to let he, her know, I, I look so good on the other side, because he's like <laughs> combing his hair, he's all dressed up, and this is how, how you remember him. Okay, so again, why <laughs> is this really good information that, that this dead person is giving to uh, you know, his daughter? I mean, if what person wouldn't want to have, you know, be representatives, I'm combing my hair. Hey, Dad, thanks for coming through and letting me know you're combing your hair. That's wonderful. You know, <laughs> big deal. Okay, here, next. Go. And did he wear Old Spice in this world? All, all, all I keep smelling is Old Spice. He wore something. Because I, I smell your father in the same way I'm connecting with your loved ones. It's the same way I'm connecting with you, so... All of a sudden, you start smelling things. Your dad's cologne or aftershave. Know that, that that's his way of acknowledging that he is there and he's with you. He's also talking about the dogs that have passed as well. He has dogs that were there with him. And, and what was the German, she- German Shepherds? Uh, it was, yeah, they were... His... Perfect. He says the dogs are here. Your, your dad gets more excited that he's not even excited to make it to heaven. He's more excited the dogs are here. My dogs are here. He is so excited about that. Did, did you understand that? Did you, so know that these two souls are on the other side. It's your dad's way of acknowledging that they are there. Okay. All right. So there's one more slide after this, but there's a lot. To, uh, to impact, uh, to unpack here. Does anybody see anything they want to mention? Quickly. The old spice. You do have old spice over here, right? Okay. Old spice. I looked it up on Wikipedia, so I know this is accurate. Old spice, especially back 40, 50 years ago, was one of the number one uh, fragrances. And everybody, anybody here, not have a old spice in their life somewhere? My dad had it. Okay. But the other thing that I want to make sure that you notice is that she didn't say it was Old Spice, right? She okay. says he wore something. Okay, so that's not saying Old Spice, but she, he just rolls with it like it was Old Spice. Because she, and, 
after the sitting, I'm sure she's going to go home and say, oh my gosh, dad came through and the psychic even know, knew he wore Old Spice. Anything else on here that you guys see? What about the dogs? Everybody has dogs or they've had dogs or the next door neighbor had dogs or there was dogs on TV when he was dying. I don't know. There's a dog somewhere in somebody's life, especially if the man's made it to 60 or 70 years old. Okay, so the thing that I missed the first time I went through this, which is real important you transcribe it, is what's this about the German shepherds? The first thing I noticed is that I went again on Wikipedia and German Shepherds, guess what? Number three dog breed of people who own pets for a very long time until World War II when uh, the German uh, wasn't so popular. So then they came back in the 1960s and became popular again. So that's another one of those broad Barnum kind of statements that could be accurate, right? The other thing is she didn't sound too convincing that those were German Shepherds. She just was kind of agreeing with him so that she would have some, you know, so he'd continue. The third thing, the thing that it really, it took me a while to notice is there is a period right here. See that? He has dogs that are there with him, period. She agrees to that in her mind. And what was the German shepherd's next sentence? Those don't have to go together. She didn't say, he didn't say, you, your dad had German shepherds, but most people in the audience probably read it that way. I know I did. Anybody else read it as if they had German shepherds, right? And that's not the truth. The truth was is that he was throwing another Barnum statement out there that the German shepherds could have been what? <coughs> they could be alive. They could be at the next door neighbor's house. They could have scared the kids when they were young because they were walking by dogs. There could be a mul multitude of answers of these German shepherds. But she kind of links to them, you know? Um, and again, how do you disprove that there are dogs in heaven with them running around, right? I mean, so of course he's excited about the dogs being there because she's already acknowledged that the guy had dogs. Okay, last one, all right? Ready? Go. He says, I want her to know that I'm the one watching over you and I'm the one that is there because you feel a presence in the house and you feel that a soul that's there. And, and you, you were like, who the hell is this? He goes, no, that's, that's me. I'm the one that's haunting you. I'm the one that's in the house. Everybody says my house is haunted. It's Last your father. Room. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's his way of bringing that, that through because I want you to know that I'm okay and more importantly by me, Correctly, though, it means I'm still your father on the other side, and I still watch over, over you every day. So know that when you feel me, you sense me. It's okay to talk to me, he says, because I'm right there by your side. Know that the dogs are here, and they are safe and at peace with me, because they were like his kids when I'm connecting with him. And you're going to know that this goes for us all that when we lose animals here in the physical world, they go back with our loved ones on the other side. You should see my freaking... Uh, something in looks like Ringling Brothers and Barnum. All these souls are with them. It's his way of bringing that through and letting you know that he's okay, he's safe and at peace and that he's with you. Right. So somebody's going to leave this reading thinking very much that their father came through. They gave him love and affirmations. Nothing that can be checked, right? Dad loved me and he's watching over me and he's hanging out at the house and I bet if I went to a bunch of uh, Matt Frazier's, uh, you know, show after show, I bet you he uses this line that uh, about the haunted house. I'm the one that's haunting you. A lot of the psychics, they just go, it's a go-to line, and they'll just throw these things out there again. Anything else stand out to you guys here? Right, it could apply, anybody here it could not apply to? So we won't be taking all So, I mean... Yeah, yeah, so who doesn't want to hear about your dead family members having, they're happy and everything's wonderful and they're playing with the dogs and the dogs are jumping around and, and there's tons of dogs. What? What? Well, I guess then you're out of luck, huh? I guess dad would say he's sorry. I, you know, I don't know, but you're hopefully, if you're going to see one of these psychics, you're hopefully probably wanting to hear from the people who are dead, yeah? <laughs> That's the other dogs. <laughs> They're all good dogs. Who's a good dog? Okay. So um, I think.
think yeah. I think we covered everything on there, but I wanted to emphasize one more time, because I've got a minute, 12 seconds, is that it's so important that we remember that the people who are going to these, these um, sitters, they need to have understanding. They need to not necessarily, I mean, don't tell them they're stupid or anything like that, because they really probably aren't. They're just not understanding. Think about how fast and furious I came to poor Amanda here, huh, Amanda? That's a lot. <laughs> And this psychic over here, this evil person over here, he is, um, he's skilled at this. This is a skill. It's word play. And they're very, very good at it. So don't assume that you can go and you can fight against this because it's going to come at you fast and furious. Definitely, we tell people to record if they can and to take notes. But when you leave, you forget, you're forgetting the hit. I mean, you remember the hits and you're forgetting the misses. And that's very, very common. So I hope you liked our exercise. Thank you to Amanda and Kelly. I just want to follow up that this entire article with all of the transcripts, as you saw, is on my website, the same one I gave you earlier today about timeproject.org. And this is called Matt Frazier Live. And you can read about the whole uh, time I went to go see Matt Frazier just a few weeks ago with Mark Edward and what we saw and what we experienced. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Susan.